Dark matter, antimatter, gold. Pure gold. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... I love this story. It seems to make a lot of sense. Science took gold and turned it into nothing. You see, physicists probe antimatter for clues to how it all began. Yeah, okay, great. We're probably gonna spend a trillion dollars figuring out how it all began. And the truth is, we'll never know. I'm okay never knowing. And some people are out there like, No, we know. We know exactly how it started. It was a big bang, and then everything went poof. Nothing exploded into everything, and then you got boobies, kisses, horses, cars, hamburgers, and cupcakes. God, I love cupcakes. Our world is made of matter. Thank you. Who wrote this article? That was a hell of a sentence. Geoff Brumel, November 4th, 2015, on NPR. Everything you see and feel, your laptop, your desk, your chair, they are all ordinary matter, says I Hong Tang, a researcher at Brookhaven National Laboratory. But matter has a counterpart called antimatter. Each kind of fundamental particle of matter has antimatter nemesis lurking. Each kind of fundamental particle of matter has an antimatter nemesis lurking in the shadows. Just like Batman has the Joker. And just like John F. Kennedy has every other president that came after him. Uh... And true to the science fiction stereotype, if matter and antimatter ever meet, they annihilate in a flash of light. Oh yeah, which is why science is spending a lot of money on it. They're like, yeah, uh, we're just trying to figure out how the universe started, when it'll probably end up in some type of weapon that can destroy everything. Sweet. Thanks, science. If you've never run into antimatter, Outside of a Star Trek episode, you're not alone. There's a lot of antimatter in our universe, and that has physicists confused. Yeah, well, it's not going to stop them from spending billions on studying dark energy, on studying dark matter and antimatter. You know, it's the shit you can't really see, you can't verify, except in these $100 million super colliders that we can never go in and verify. Like, can I get a tour of CERN? You know, does CERN have like a public tour where we get to see all the shit in action? No. Everybody got like goes into the big machine and is like, blah, 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 blah. and then they come out and like, oh yeah, look, here's this diagram. We just found a quark and some stranglets. Uh, can I have more money for my research? We actually don't understand why antimatter is as rare as it actually is. Wait, I thought it was like 51% matter, 49% antimatter. Says Joel Fajans, a researcher at the University of California, Berkeley. The Big Bang should have produced just as much matter as antimatter, but it didn't. Maybe your theories are all freaking wrong, man. You know? Maybe that's why none of it adds up. That would make sense to me. To try and solve the mystery, researchers make small amounts of antimatter in the lab. What? Nah, see I thought antimatter made things explode. Like if antimatter touched matter, set off like a chain reaction of explosions. Like that, you know? I don't know. One recent experiment took place inside a giant particle accelerator called the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider. The collider smashed together atoms of pure gold. Ah, dark matter, dark matter, dark matter, antimatter, gold. Dark matter, antimatter, gold. Pure gold. The raw energy of the collisions created particles of antimatter. And then what happened? Please do tell us. And did you guys videotape that shit? The group of scientists that Tang belongs to studied the antimatter counterparts of protons. I wonder if Tang feels weird that all the astronauts love him. Yeah, because most astronauts are dudes. And weird enough, most astronauts don't go into outer space nowadays. Man, science is so weird these days. A proton is the positively charged particle found at the center of atoms. The antimatter version is negatively charged and called, you guessed it, an antiproton. Tang measured something called the strong nuclear force between two antiprotons. In normal matter, the strong force is what holds atomic nuclei together. All right, cool. I'm glad science recognized that there is some validity to the Jedi religion, to the Jedi way. Our experiment, Pudi Tang and his group wanted to see if it could hold antiprotons together as well. Their result published in the journal Nature suggests the strong force works the same for antiprotons as it does for protons. Our experiment confirmed that they indeed behaved just like ordinary matter, Tang says. And here's why that matters, or here's why that antimatters. If antimatter behaves differently than matter, then there may be some asymmetry at work, and that might explain why there are are such drastically different amounts in the universe. Fajans, who is not directly involved with the research, 
says researchers are going to keep looking for cases where the antimatter acts differently. There are four fundamental forces that physicists are aware of. That's a fun sentence to say. Can I try it again? There are four fundamental forces that physicists are aware of. And we're starting to cover them all, Faye Jans said. It's a wonderful time in the antimatter business. Bingo! You're turning gold into nothing. It's a big science antimatter business. Sweet. God, I love honesty. Atoms of pure gold. Are there gold atoms that are not pure? This is why scientists hate science reporters. Whoa, man. Hate only leads to the dark side. But I guess scientists are looking for dark matter, antimatter, and dark energy. So I guess scientists are just going to keep on hating. I don't recommend that, though. That's a weak force, bro. I don't know. Seems like a bunch of malarkey to me. But whatever. I'm no scientist. Wait, I take that back. My solar science is strong. My weather science as well. But I don't crap about antimatter, dark matter, dark energy. Wait, I take that back. Dark energy is where evil comes from. And evil is super douchey. Okay, God bless everybody. Peace out. I hope we've learned something here today. I'm not sure we have, though. All right. Cool.